at uh, Gaurav Mehta is joining us, Chief Investment Officer, Alternatives at uh, SBI Mutual Fund. Gaurav, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. It's good talking to you after a really long time. Uh, of course, uh, you know, our earlier interactions uh, were when, uh, you know, you used to uh, head the trading desk at Tidalwise, right? Uh, uh, so, so good to be talking to you, uh, Gaurav. Uh, uh, what, what's your view on the market now, given the current happenings and how, how would you uh, sort of uh, approach it for incrementally from here? Uh, good to speak to you also, Anuj, after a long time and just a small correction here. So I was earlier a part of uh, Ambit's uh, investment advisory arm yeah, before I'm... I moved to the mutual fund a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, coming to uh, markets, obviously, it's been very interesting times last few months. Uh, you know, if you think of broader markets, for India at least, the story is uh, a little divided. If you think of it from a longer term point of view, we all know that, uh, you know, the global economic order is being reshaped. And what you're seeing incrementally is that a lot of erstwhile prominent economies are now struggling for their place in the global uh, order. And that is some spot that, you know, economies, especially like India, are steadily but surely sort of trying to capture. So that long term continues to be very promising uh, for India. But I think uh, that said, we shouldn't also wish away whatever we are seeing with respect to uh, short-term macro concerns. And again, most of them are uh, global in concern, but global in nature. But you know, with a large part of the global economy uh, sort of uh, struggling, it's difficult to see how uh, you know, even though on a ab- relative basis, will uh, withstand that or sort of withstand that better. But on an absolute basis, I think uh, we will uh, also face uh, some of those concerns coming from uh, a weak global macro. And then, you know, if you round it up with our own valuations, uh, we tend to look at valuations for equities uh, with reference to where the risk-free rate in the system is. So so when you look at the 10-year GSEC at 745, uh, then obviously the current equity valuations look a bit on the expensive side. So I think there's this tug of war, an interesting long-term uh, prospect, but from a near-term point of view, global macro headwinds and then a bit uh, of expensive valuations. And I think... That tug of war is what uh, you've been seeing uh, playing out for almost a year now. We've seen these sharp 10, 15 percent corrections. We've seen these sharp rallies like we saw over the last two months. But end on end, I think uh, we've largely been flat. So I, I guess, you know, I won't be surprised if this volatility continues for a bit longer. Uh, the important point is that we shouldn't get too pessimistic when things are, when chips are down. And similarly, we shouldn't get too optimistic on uh, the kind of rallies that we've seen over the last two months. So this is a time, I think, to continue sticking to your uh, longer-term asset allocation. All right. Uh, hi, Gaurav. Nigel, on this side, uh, you know, I think uh, we have spoken numerous times about the nifty additions and deletions, I think, uh, in the past as well, quite a few years ago, if uh, that was the case. But you said, uh, you know, shouldn't get too optimistic and pessimistic. For the time being, it appears chips are down, uh, at least in the near term. If that's going to be the case and we're going to be going through a period of volatility, uh, what are the sectors, the themes that you like from here on? Right. So I think one segment that we particularly like is, uh, you know, I mean, this entire theme around disinflation, because I think the headlines over the last several months have been uh, captured by this high inflation globally. Uh, You've seen commodities cool off some bit, but what you've also seen is that central banks uh, across our particularly resolved with respect to taming inflation. So I think we won't be surprised that going forward, inflation does start to come off, even though, you know, that will come at the cost of economic slowdown. So for markets as a whole, the volatility will persist. But uh, within that, I think uh, themes that benefit from disinflation is something that we are interested in. And in that sense, I think uh, domestic consumption is something that stands out. Uh, You know, if you think of the entire sort of uh, post-pandemic world, uh, there was this Western uh, uh, world which was giving a lot of fiscal support to uh, uh, its uh, residents. And those residents then consumed uh, thanks to that fiscal support on the other side of uh, COVID. And that in turn is partly responsible to the inflation problem that you're seeing today. Uh, but when you think of emerging markets like India, we obviously didn't have the wherewithal to give exactly the same amount of fiscal stimulus that the Western world gave. Uh, so to that extent, there was income disruption and then inflation came through, which in turn meant that uh, you know real disposable income was uh, eaten into. So in a way, you know it was the Western consumer crowding out the uh, global consumer. I think with uh, disinflation, that should reverse. Uh, so, uh, so you know, consumers in countries like India should uh, sort of uh, get benefit of that. Uh, and again, in India, if you think of it, the urban consumption piece or the high ticket consumption piece is something that has held up uh, well uh, on the other side of COVID. But is the rural or semi-urban consumption that's uh, been particularly hit hard by uh, high inflation. So I think that's one pocket that we are now gradually uh, uh, starting to nibble into because uh, as inflation comes out, I think uh, semi-urban and rural consumption should also pick up, whether it's you know uh, low-ticket discretionary consumption, whether it's consumer appliances and so on. 
So that's one pocket that we are clearly uh, positive on. The other theme, which again is a longer term theme uh, that we continue to like is this entire manufacturing theme. And uh, clearly, I mean, India is emerging as uh, the preferred uh, or at least the alternative uh, destination for uh, global companies. You can again sort of dissect manufacturing into sub themes like garmenting and specialty chemicals and whatnot. But uh, that's again one theme that we continue to be positive on. Any, anything that you are avoiding right now, Gaurav, in this market? Right, so I think uh, overall for the good part of this year, we've been avoiding a lot of these uh, outward facing sectors, uh, information technology being one of them. Uh, and clearly valuations in some of these names have moderated quite a lot versus where they were a year or so ago. Uh, but still, you know, from a timing point of view, given the persisting macro uncertainties globally, uh, we still are not uh, too uh, sort of constructive um, uh, and we would sort of wait out this period of pain before we get into some of these external facing sectors like tech or, uh, you know, materials for that matter. So I think those clearly are uh, avoids at the moment. Mm. <clears throat> Gaurav, hi. Uh, Prashant here. So as as uh, head of the alternatives business, this uh, w would, the, would the style of investment be different? I mean, uh, just to understand a little bit about whether uh, you, you're a long only uh, sort of a mandate, right, uh, Gaurav? Yeah, so we run both PMS strategies as well as AIF strategies. On PMS, the mandate is long only, and we run very concentrated portfolios there, 20, 25 stocks, not more. And the investment horizon is typically very long. Uh, on the AIF side, we have a long short fund as well, wherein uh, we can sort of alter allocation depending on our asset allocation frameworks. And those asset allocation frameworks are largely centered around valuations, um, overall market sentiment, and uh, earnings momentum. And, uh, you know, these frameworks for us have been telling us to be uh, underweight on equities for a good part of the past 12 months. And uh, that's the stance we continue to carry forward uh, in the long short strategies. On the long only payment strategies, we continue to be as invested as uh, a typical long only fund. Okay. So on the AIF uh, side, we already spoke about uh, what, what you like. Uh, so what, what don't you, what don't you like, uh, you know, not like enough to short? <laughs> that's a... Uh... So, I mean, uh, ours is a very different kind of a long shot strategy wherein we short only through nifty futures uh, okay. or sort of through nifty derivatives. Uh, but as I said, right, uh, we have absolutely no exposure to tech in that fund. We have absolutely no exposure to materials in that fund. Okay. Uh, we have very low exposure to consumer staples. So those are the pa pockets that we continue to sort of dislike and hence avoid. Uh, not outright shorts, obviously, because that's not the mandate of the fund. Okay, so uh, how how much is your long shot now? I, I mean, uh, and... Uh... Uh, you only uh, would short Nifty, as I said, not even Bank Nifty, right? I mean, no, only Nifty. Absolutely. Okay, so how, so, how much so is your long shot? Right, so today, you know, again, and I'll just go back to my uh, framework. So on market sentiment, uh, we have a quantified way of looking at market sentiment. Mm -hmm. We were very uh, uh, euphoric about 12 months ago, but thanks to the correction of the past 12 months, our market sentiment reading has now come back to neutral uh, zones. And I think that's something that you can see. The amount of IPO market activity has obviously softened. The uh, frauds that were there across the market uh, spectrum are now, you know, in limited pockets, and there are quite a lot of pockets that are now providing opportunities. So the sentiment piece is neutral. Earnings, I think you could argue that from a longer term point of view, we are uh, at the beginning of, a, of an earnings recovery cycle because uh, if you think, look at uh, corporate profits to GDP in India, they were secularly declining between 2008 and 2020. A big 12 for a good 12 13 year period but over the last two years profits to gdp have started inching higher and earnings typically you know trend for a pretty longish period of time six seven eight years at one go so to that extent you can make the point that on earnings uh, we are at early stages of an earnings recovery cycle even though as i said right from a two to four quarters point of view uh, when you look at uh, fiscal policy across the world, when you look at monetary policy across the world, or when you look at credit conditions across the world, all of those things are pointing to uh, earnings deceleration in the in the near term. But from a longer term point of view, you know, it's again a question of, of uh, what is your uh, investment horizon. Uh, and then the third pillar is valuations, which I said is expensive. So, so uh, you know, we are allowed to move between zero to 130% uh, on this fund. And today, as we speak, we'll be somewhere closer to 50% in terms of overall allocation. A neutral level is closer to 70%. So we've been carrying a, a, a below neutral allocation for uh, ever since, uh, you know, as I said, for a good part of the past uh, okay. several months. All right. Uh, Gaurav, thanks so much for stopping by, giving us uh, your view on markets and a whole host of sectors. Look forward to having a chat with you in the time to come. Well, for the time being, well, the markets, uh, 